Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 161 of What Does This Button Do? It's a educational show about smartphones and tablets with us, Geeks on Tour. All right, today's beginner's lesson is about how to remember your travels with pictures, maps, and blogs. But first, Chris has a quick tip. What do you have there, quick? Chris, <laughs> quick, quickly. <laughs> Photo locations. Yeah. So if you take photos as you travel, which we certainly think you should, you lots of times want to know where was this picture taken? And if you take it with a smartphone, some device that has a GPS built into it, it's very easy to do. Using Google Photos, if you're using if you're looking at your photos on a computer, you click that little I, and that opens up the info panel to the right, and you should see a map there. On a phone, when you're using Google Photos, you just swipe up on the photo to reveal the info panel. And if you don't wanna see it anymore, you swipe, you swipe down. So just swipe up, swipe down. If you try that on any of your photos and you don't see a map, that means that your photo doesn't have the location information, sometimes called geotagging. You either took the photo using a regular camera that doesn't have GPS built in, or your settings are not turned on on your phone to do the geotagging. So where is that setting? On an Android, you go into the camera settings and it's called location tags or geotags and you turn it on. In the iPhone, it's in your main settings under location services. Location services must be on and then you do camera. And just to make sure you understand what I'm talking about, I want to show you on the phone. Okay. There. Nope. That's not... Live. Oh, so, what happened there? I don't know. That's that's weird. Uh, all right. Well, back to you. You're just gonna have to. <laughs> uh, like I said, on the Android phone, you open the camera app and look for settings in there, and you should find a setting somewhere called location tags or geotag and you make sure that that's on on the iphone it is in the main settings under privacy so in the main settings you have privacy and then location services and location services must not only be on but then you need to look down in the list below location services and under camera make sure it's set to while using rather than rather than never okay let's see i broke it it was working before i don't know what happened anyway i'm sorry <laughs> uh, let's see we'll try it again in a minute that's why we make recordings <laughs> <laughs> all right so well do you think your smartphone is smarter than you and do you have questions about your ipad or your iphone and your androids and how do you learn about these amazing devices well, we are geeks who teach, and we think the best way to learn is in bite-sized pieces on a regular basis. So that's why we've come up with this, can I call it a weekly show anymore, uh, even though we took, we took yeah, a month off? Yeah, we'll call off. it a weekly show. <laughs> <laughs> we still send out, an e we send out a lesson every week, whether we do a live show or not. So if you subscribe to our newsletter, you will get a weekly email with a lesson, a tech lesson, mostly about smartphones, lots of times about photos. And we think that's just really the best, mm -hmm. best way to learn. Okay. We do invite you to go to our website. It's geeksontour.com. There you will learn all kinds of stuff that we have there for you. We have 
a weekly class. That's this. We have tutorial videos. 551 of those up there on our website for members. And members also get show notes for these wonderful shows. <laughs> and Chris, where are we now? <laughs> well, we're not in Hokitika, New Zealand, but Aww. we were last week. And we almost did a show from there. So I, I just couldn't delete this slide. We were in an Airbnb in this cute little town called Hokitika. And they had good Wi-Fi. Hokey. Hokey, yeah. But we decided to go to the Kiwi Museum instead of doing a show, I think, is what <laughs> happened. So we are home now. Back in Florida. After five weeks in Australia and New Zealand. Wow, it was a great trip, too. So I know that some of you followed our album yeah. uh, on the while we were over there. And this is such a cool way to share your travels. It's so easy. That's what I hope I'm going to be able to show you in a minute. Uh, <laughs> and once the album is begun and you send out the link to all your friends or any, all your mailing list, then anybody who gets the link can join is what it's called the album and then you get notified anytime that I add new photos to it. So it's it's like being there with us. All right, give me a minute. And just to show you what it does look like then, it's done with Google Photos. So, and we have a link to it on our travel blog. So at our main website, geeksontour.com, blogs and news, there's Chris and Jim's travel blog and our photo album. So if you wanna see our whole New Zealand photo album now, that's where you would go. And it's right there, Australia, New Zealand. So we start that at the beginning of the trip and just keep adding pictures to it. And notice that we can also add text blocks here and maps. In a minute, map will come up to show that we started in Brisbane and then we flew up to Cairns. So if you are a photo oriented person, this can this is your whole travel travel log right here just in in your photo album google photos makes it so easy uh oh i'm having some technical problems here we're okay on your side but keep going okay <laughs> uh no any questions oh well, no not yet so, Aaron says good for us, good for you, <laughs> <laughs> to keep your trip rather than do a show from there. Oh, uh, just, just. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we thought about it, but it just, uh, it just didn't happen. So. And while viewing the photo album, as I said, just looking at the album view, you're seeing the pictures in a small size and you're seeing these text blocks and maps. When you, if you want to see a photo full size, you just click on it. And this is where you so say you can see the map that that pops up. If you don't want to see that info panel, you just click the X. And uh, this is on a computer. Same thing on a on a phone. But uh, you need to be able to see the phone. <laughs> now, as I click my right arrow button, you're just going through the slides one by one. Or on a computer and, and videos. And just when you get to a video, it plays. Pretty cool album that way. It's not just photos. And you can put it just in slideshow mode. And then you don't even have to have to click the button. Look at these kids. We were we were mom and dad on this dive boat. <laughs> <laughs> boat mom and boat dad. Boat mom and boat dad, they called us, yeah. They were a bunch of nice people. Nice kids, yeah. All right. 
So on a slideshow. And the other thing that you can do when your photos are in a Google Photos album, you can cast them to your TV. If you have a Chromecast on your TV, you can cast them or it can just be a background slideshow on your TV. So that's the first thing we did <laughs> when we got home. We just turned on the TV and started watching all our photos on that big screen. So much, so much fun. And we didn't have to do anything for that. We had already selected our best pictures and put them in an album. So we had no work to do once we got home. It was all done. <laughs> That's the point of this, of this, what we're going to teach you today. Okay. I'm still having trouble with that. Okay. I don't I'll start it over. But... Okay. Well, I can do it. You know, I'd like for them to see the phone, but uh, the other two pieces, we have recordings and they will. Okay. I can do it just by here and then on the computer. So what I want to show you first, oh, I'm sorry. I've gotten all off here. <laughs> I need to go back to the slideshow first. Okay. And because there's a couple slides to introduce this. So we were five weeks in Australia, New Zealand. We had a great time. We had great weather. And it made me really, really want to teach you all <laughs> our method for remembering our travels. That's cool. Because I think, you know, we've been working on this for many, many years. She has been working on this for And ever. I really like what we have finally ended up with that combines photos, maps, and a blog. So this is our system. Our system is we use Google Photos because you can just take a ton of photos. They're all stored for free. And you just pick the best ones for a trip album. And you do that while you're on the trip. It's just so easy. It's fun. Then we also make maps with markers of every place we want to remember using Google My Maps. It's based on Google Maps, but Google My Maps is something different. And then last, but definitely not least for me, is we write our stories using Google's blogger.com. And that's where it comes all together. I like to write, but it, writing is no good without photos, maps, and links. And Blogger can put that all together. Why do we use all Google tools? Number one, it's cloud-based. That means it doesn't matter what device you have in your hand, you can see your pictures. It lasts forever. I have been using, even, even though Google might change products, they still hold on to your pictures in your account. I have been using Google to store my photos since 2003, and they're all still there. When I get a new computer, there's one trying, hey, <laughs> you just needed me to sing and dance for a little I enough. guess so. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, looks good. Okay, yes. But go back to here. And now I'm not ready for it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so number one, it's cloud-based. Number two, it's free. All the Google tools that I'm showing you are free. Number three, they work together. So with one login, one Google account, in fact, that's very important only have one Google account, then you can use photos, my maps and blogger, and they all work together. I think it's pretty easy and there's still stuff to learn. And we have a bunch of tutorial videos on all of this. And with Google, because I've been using them since 2003, I have a level of trust that my fo photos, maps and blog posts are going to be there forever forever yeah i know For I, free. I i hear people <laughs> groaning out there yeah. yeah just like google took this away from us and took that away from us yeah but when you have your stuff there 
even if they take a product away, they give you a way to still access your stuff. I, I trust that as opposed to some uh, other services that have just gone away, period. Mm. Like, what was it? Is Flickr still? Flickr still around. But one of those, a Yahoo one, my pictures are just gone. Yep. That I had in that service. All right. So the first step to our system is photos. We say to use your phone to take the photos because your phone is with you. It's easy. And especially if you have any new phone, they take excellent pictures and just take a lot of them. If you use Google Photos, you have unlimited storage for free. So you can take a lot of them and then just pick the best. Start an album when you are at the beginning of your trip, add photos as you go, just picking the best ones. By the time you get home, you're all done. So I'm gonna take it, do a demo here. You've already seen some samples of the album, our Australia, New Zealand album. What well, we got back a couple days ago and this, what we're doing right now, it still has to do with our Australia trip. So I wanna take some, a picture right now and so I'm just going to, I'm going to use my phone and I'm going to take a couple so I can choose which one. So I want, no, you get in there closer. There we go. All right. So that's a picture of Jim and our studio layout here. And then I have to do one as a selfie and I'll decide which one to use here. There we go. Oh, I have a timer on. <laughs> <laughs> There it goes. That. All right. And and maybe I'll take one more just just give you the idea. Okay. So, I now have three photos that I just took with my phone. And I'm going to open up Google Photos. That's the multicolor pinwheel there. And we see them. We see those photos that I just took. I look at them and I say, oh, you know, this one has neither of us for sh in it. This one has both of us and this one has just Jim. I like the one that has both of us. Now I'll always give it a, just an editing tap to see. I'll click on the edit button and then auto. And there's really not a whole lot to improve that picture. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the one that I say I want to put that in our Australia New Zealand album and I'll, I'll add a description too I'll say two days after we got home we did a show on YouTube all right good enough now, I want to tap the three-dot menu and add to album. They can't see that three-dot menu on the screen. Oh, okay. There it is, right up there. There we go. Thank you. Three-dot menu, add to album. And then I just have to find the Australia New Zealand album. There it is. So that's all there is to it. Now, if I want to look at that album, it's the button down at the bottom, the tab called albums. And I just got a notification on my phone that Chris added a picture to that album because uh -huh. I'm following that album. Pretty cool. So I can open that album, scroll all the way down to the bottom. And there is the picture that I just added. And yes, anybody who's following the album just got a notification. Very cool. So that's just easy. Now, what if I wanted to add some words or a map? I have a map here of getting to uh, to Miami. So let's say that now I want to add a map right before this picture that says we got home. To do that, you do edit album and then location and map. And from Miami, to Fort Lauderdale. And add map. Done.
and sometimes it gets added in weird places. So I have to. What was that one? That's that's no, New Zealand, that, Miami. Yeah. Okay. Above that. Thought I saw another map. It was smaller though. Nope. I don't know where it got added. But you can drag that it down. That was stupid. Yeah. There, I got Abbott all the way at the beginning. I didn't tap. And yes, you can drag it, but this is, that'll take a while to get it all the way down. I would rather exit and do it over again, but I'm not going to bother and do now. It at the bottom. And do it at the bottom, okay. right? <laughs> Phew. Okay. Wow. Now, if you want to learn how to do all of that stuff, um, I recommend our Google Photos book. Mrs. Geek's Guide to Google Photos. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, you have free access to the, to the PDF. To the download. Okay. So that's photos. And, and that's the first part and the most important. That is the most important part. You know, it, it's, it's easy. You're going to be taking photos anyway. Just add them to, add the best ones to an album. And by the time you're home, you're done. You might want to add a couple maps, add a couple text blocks, but I also like dedicated maps. So the easiest way to get an overview of the whole trip for your memories, like you can look at this map and just at a glance know that we did travel some in the North Island of New Zealand and in the South Island, but we did not get south of the middle of the South Island. So that's just such an easy way to have an overview. And then each marker is clickable. And we have a little video on how to do this. Hi, this is Chris Gold with Geeks on Tour. And this tutorial video is about Google My Maps and how we use it to remember our travels. You can see all of our Geeks on Tour maps from our main website, geeksontour.com. If you click on Blogs and News and Chris and Jim's Travel Blog, there is a page for our maps. You can see that we make one for every year to show where we've been already started making one for 2019 because we've been to Australia and New Zealand already. There's a marker at every place where we visited. I want you to notice that there's a marker up here in Cairns, Australia, because we went there to go diving. I want to add a marker to where we were actually out on the reef on a boat. Let me show you how. First, if you are going to use Google Maps, Google My Maps, it's different. You can go there straight away with mymaps.google.com. And as long as you are logged in with your Google account, you should see all the maps you've created, or you can create a new one. But here is my map where I've been creating 2019. So to add a marker at the reef, First, I'm going to search for Flynn's Reef. It is one of the dive sites where we were at Flynn Reef, Australia. And I'm zooming back out by using my scroll wheel. So you can see that, yes, that is, that is where we were. I could just add this marker to the map, but I don't want to. Why? Because if I use the marker that comes straight from Google Maps, then I will get all the photos that people have added to Google Maps. They won't be my photos. I want my own marker. So I'll click on this tool and then click right by that same spot. I can type anything I want in the title and in the description. I can also add a photo by clicking on this little camera. I'm going to get the photos from my photos, which means my Google Photos albums. And here is the Australia New Zealand album. And here is a picture of Jim and me on the dive boat. I select that. I want to add another picture, so I'll click on this little plus. And I like that, having one underwater picture. But you know what? I also have 
videos. Jim made a YouTube video that I would like to add here. Well, I can't insert it in with these pictures, but I could put the link right here in the description. First, I need to find the video. It's on Jim's YouTube channel and Geeks Dive the Great Barrier Reef. I just click the share button, copy the link, and go back to my map and paste that link right in with the description and save. And I'm done. You don't need to save the whole map. You do need to save anything that you change to a marker. Now I'm going to close it. And what I think is so cool that I want you to understand, since this is all web-based, it's strictly in the cloud, The anybody now looking at that map sees that it has been updated. There are now two markers up here, and one of them is out on the Great Barrier Reef. I can see two pictures, and I can click the link to see the YouTube video. So that's how we use a map to remember our travels. Now, obviously, as you've seen here, you can share it. We have other videos on creating your own maps and on sharing them, but I primarily do it just for myself. If you're a traveler, I'll bet you love maps as much as I do, and it's a great way to remember your travels and share them with others if you want. Pretty cool. I love my maps. Yes, you do. <laughs> I love your maps too. I do. And as I say, we've kept a map for every year since 2003. So it's so easy to go back and say, when were, when were we up in Washington state? Yeah, I don't just, remember. I don't. Scroll through the map. <laughs> now, and if you want to learn, I'd have to look at the <laughs> I'd have to look at the blog and the map. If you want to learn more, that we have a whole series of tutorial videos on how to use Google My Maps on our website for members. So we've done photos and and maps. Now, if you like to write, oh. I think you need a blog. Yes. So not everybody does. You know, I think everybody should take pictures. People who travel, I think, want a map. But if you like to write, then the blog is the way to do that. And one of the main reasons why I believe in using blogs for it, I'm a journal writer. I've kept, it was diaries when I was a kid. As an adult, you don't call them diaries anymore. You call them a journal. But look what can happen to paper journals. Ugh. This one got wet and it's destroyed. Yeah. In fact, several of them. I mean, this is journals of mine and they get destroyed. So I believe in using Blogger. Now you can keep it private just to you. I believe in making it public because it's, it's, it's fun to, to share. Or you can have a private one and a public one. You know, you can have as many as you want. It's another Google service that is free. The other cool thing about Blogger is that it can be your home base. It can collect all of your other stuff. You can put photos in your blog. You can put maps in it. You can put your YouTube videos in it. So it can tie everything together. Exactly. And here we also have another little pre-recorded piece. <laughs> All right. Hi, this is Chris Gold with Geeks on Tour, and this video is about how we keep a journal of our travels, actually our whole life. If you go to our website, geeksontour.com, and see the blogs and news menu, it's Chris and Jim's travel blog. We use Blogger to do this because it is from Google, it is free and unlimited, and because it's from Google, it connects to our Google Photos. So it has been our way of keeping a travel journal since the beginning of our traveling. If you look at the 
archive on my right hand sidebar, you can see that it goes back to April 2003. At any point in time, you can open up these archive tabs and see things that we have written. So for example, in this last month, we were in New Zealand, and there's all the articles we've written in New Zealand so far. And in January, we were in Australia, and here is the post about going out on a dive boat on the Great Barrier Reef. It includes photos from our Google Photos, and it even includes a video from, from YouTube. Blogger allows you to do all sorts of things. This is where I keep a page of our maps, a page of our videos, a page of all our photo albums. But the main thing it's for is just for a personal blog. So that is here. And the topmost post will be the most recent, February 26. I'm a bit behind, so I want to show you how I would add the next post in our travels. There is a little link up here that says new post, but that might not always be there. So I want you to see the number one way, and that would be to go to blogger.com. And we have a whole series of videos on how to use Blogger. If you are logged in with your account, you will see all the blogs that you, I've made a lot of blogs, but our number one is just Geeks on Tour blog. And there is a listing of all of my posts, 1,881 posts on this blog. That was in New Zealand. Let me make a post on the next place we went to in New Zealand. I click the orange button, new post. Now you could make this blog completely private to you. It's a setting. Ours is public. Anybody who knows the web address can, can see it. So the next post I want to write is West. Now when I publish this post, it will get today's date by default. Since I'm running behind, I don't want it to get today's date. I want it to get a date about a week ago, which would be February, say, 26. And I have to click done on that. So now when this gets posted, it will say it was posted on February 26. And this is a footer that I have on all of my blog posts, but I'll just delete it for this. I can type whatever I want, and it can be as long as I want. This is how you create whole stories. So here is where I want a photo. I can click on the little Add Image button, and from my Google Album Archive. They keep changing these. You know, one of these days it'll just say from your photos. And from your phone also means your Google Photos. But from Album Archive, I should be able to find my Australia, New Zealand album. And then I can come down to the pictures that I want. That one. And in this tool, I can select multiple pictures at once. And add them. Then I have choices of their size. I like to really see the pictures, so I'm going to click extra large. All right. I need to add more to this post, but for purposes of keeping this short, I'm just going to publish this right now. And now know that if I go back to my blog, now the first post you see is the one I just wrote, West Coast of New Zealand. And here are the photos I put in. So that is how we use blog, the free blogger tool to create our travel journal, and if I ever need to remember anything about our travelers, I just say, look it up in the blog. Cool. All right. And although I say that pictures are the most important, the first thing you do and the most important, 
because I do keep a blog, it ends up being the first place I go to to review my memories because then it has pictures and maps and everything else right there. Cool. And if you want to learn how to make blog and how to use the tools in Blogger, we have a bunch of lessons on our website for members. But what if, what if you don't feel good about things only being online? You like printed stuff. Well, I do too. But as I showed you, if I started with printed stuff and it gets destroyed, that it's gone. Yeah. It's just gone. So if you start with the electronic version, the web stuff, there are easy ways to turn those into printed things. So here is with Google Photos, there is an easy button, just make me a book and you tell it what photos or you just select an album and one of our other episodes yeah we've done this we've we've shown how to do this you to a hundred photos a hundred pictures yeah so this was our trip to italy a couple few years ago and w literally just a couple of clicks to tell it and you have to give them some money and you do have to give them some money yeah <laughs> this was about forty dollars i think maybe a little less i think forty dollars for this book and now when I had this done, all you could have is pictures, no text. Now you can have captions on, on each picture. So I'm gonna do that for the Australia, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, Ooh, I love talking. my blog books. So for that, that blog that you saw, the Geeks on Tour blog, done with Blogger, I created all online, adding pictures. Then there's another website, totally unrelated as far as I know, called blog2print.com. 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 And you just tell it where your blog is and what dates you want. So I do one for every year. And it is a beautiful, and I just love sitting on the couch, browsing. Yeah, this has all. Browsing our life the stuff in there. If I ever have a down day, which is rare, <laughs> <laughs> but I do once in a while, all I have to do is pick up one of my blog books. Yeah, that'll and, make her happy. And I, I know what a wonderful life I have. Cool. Questions, let's see, Howard's asking, I can tie my phone pictures with my wife's phone pictures under the same Google storage so we can make a single album? Great question. Yeah. If you look at our album, you might notice that some of them say Chris Gould and some of them say Jim Gould. So that's one way of doing it. And some of them say Melinda Blackwell. She was my friend who traveled with us during the RV portion. And I could make the album in such a way that we could all three add to it. But on an ongoing basis, Jim shares his entire library of photos with me and I share my entire library of photos with him. So we have our own separate libraries, but she can see what I have put into mine very easily because of that sharing setting. Yeah, I can get anything he, he takes and vice versa. Yeah, right. But, but that actually does bring up another point. I think it's kind of necessary to designate one person as the photo librarian right. for the family. Yeah, especially for these. But what happens in that case is you'll get more of her. I mean, even if a picture was taken by me, it might get her name on it. Right. Because if I go and Nobody grab can. one of his photos from his library, <laughs> it becomes my photo. Right. And so you can't, so there's two ways of doing it. You can either have a shared album where multiple people can add pictures or you have one person designated and they can get the pictures from the other. I do not recommend sharing an account. Right. You know, that a lot of people do, but it, it'll it end up, sloppy. it'll come back to bite you. Right. 
Okay, another question. How do you swipe text? My phone won't do that. Is it in settings? Well, it depends on your phone. But yeah, a lot of Androids now just come with that built in, but it might be a setting in your keyboards and input. And on the iPhone? On the iPhone, you have to download an app, and I would recommend Gboard. Mm -hmm. And actually, we need yeah. we're we'll be doing an episode on trying that to do that sometime again. soon. Yeah. Okay. Gboard. Okay. I love it. This the swiping. Oh, once you get used to it, you can. You know, I just as soon type on my phone as on a right. keyboard. Cool. Well, not completely, but close. <laughs> Is that it? I think so. Okay. Go on. App of the week. Ah, this is something that we used in New Zealand. So, and it's called CamperMate. If you're camping or traveling New Zealand or Australia and renting a camper van, the way we did, you really want to have this free travel app to help you find what you need when traveling. It has, I mean, all kinds of places to stay all of the, the freedom camping spots, the places where you can dump your holding tanks, which came in very handy. Uh, check it with it, though. It's not always up to date, and they've changed a lot of stuff, especially around Christchurch, we found out, because a few years ago, they had this horrible earthquake that really disrupted a lot of the infrastructure. So we found out that the place where we wanted to fill up our Propane tanks in the place we wanted to do our final dump were changed, and the actual place where we wanted to be was right around the corner from where we had to turn the thing in, but we didn't know that right offhand. So it, it, any of these apps, and no matter where you're traveling, this happens to be the one for New Zealand and, and Australia, but anywhere you travel, there will be an app sort of like this here in the States. We like all stays, right? Right. Anything else you want to say about this? Uh, no, just that this is the one we use. There are others, but we found camp spots both free and pay for. And and even things like public restrooms and grocery stores oh, were in this yeah. app. That was a little bit different from, from the ones we're used to here in the States. Yeah, but it was really was a handy, handy app and... Camping is very popular in New Zealand, mm. but one thing we mm, we had talked to people who did freedom camping, meaning just park anywhere and don't pay for the, a night stay. And, no hookups. And that's not mm, – freedom campers are getting a bad name these days mm. in New Zealand, and they're trying to kind of clamp down on it. And I can see we only stayed in one freedom camping spot the whole time. Right. We did some driveway camping with friends. And and there were campers there that were not considerate of the land. Yeah. Just to make, and that's leave why it at that. it's becoming a problem. Yeah. Right? Just takes one bad one. Yeah. It's... Know what you're doing. We do invite you to become a member at geeksontour.com. Just go to our website and click on the Become a Member link there. See our website, geeksontour.com. We have a weekly class there, and that's what we're doing here. Make sure you're subscribed and click on the bell. Is that bell gone away yet? Somebody said it was going away. Oh. You want to subscribe anyway. We might have to change this. We've been away for a while. <laughs> Well, and what else? Any more questions? I can't believe all the new things I learned work together in this one session. Thank you. You're welcome, Marianne. How do you tie your Google Photos together with a big string? <laughs> <laughs> you mean my Google Photos and his Google Photos? I mean, if, if that's what you mean, the answer is it's called Shared Library. And it is in the book. Right. If you have the second edition. Hmm. Of and the if, book. and as, a, as a member, you can go in and download the PDF, the book. So yeah. it's all in there. Shared library. And we'll be talking about that in one of the shows coming up. Okay. Okay. Well, did you learn something? <laughs> I know I did. If you want your memories to last forever, it's best to store them A, in the cloud, B, on a computer or C on your phone, or D on paper. 
What do you think, Chris? I say in the cloud, cloud is what I do. Now, you should always have a backup. I mean, a cloud should not be your only copy, but that's the copy that I, is my main working copy is the cloud. Okay. Because you saw what happened when you put it on paper. <laughs> <laughs> what can happen. Using Google Photos, if you're looking at a picture on your phone and you want to see the map of its location, how do you do that? Just swipe up to reveal the info screen. Now that's on a that's on a phone. The easiest way to manage your travel photos is A, only take a few, B, delete all but your best. C, take a lot and select just the best for your albums. I know the answer to this. <laughs> it's absolutely C. I mean, taking a few, no, no, no take way. Take a lot you're, of no pictures, way gonna... that way you're gonna get some good pictures and save those best pictures in an album and that's what you share with your friends and family. Right. We recommend making your maps using Google what? My Maps. Okay. It's based on Google Maps, but My Maps means it's where you put your stuff. And it's private to you. It's totally private. Cool. All right. We recommend writing your stories using Google. Blogger.com. Blogger. It's a, a little known gem. Free. The best way to get an overview of your trip is A, album, B, Map, C, blog. I think map is, you know, in one glance, you see the whole trip. And if you want to click on markers, then you can get detail. All right. But if you only do one of the three, which one should it be? A, photos, B, maps, or C, blog? A, photos. I agree. And if you make an album and use the tools that Google gives you to put some text blocks in and some maps, it's, it can be your entire well, cool. uh, travel log. Okay. Anything else? So what is the web page that lists all of our weekly shows, Chris? Geeksontour.com and the menu item is weekly class and the web page that lists all of our recent newsletters. Geeksontour.com. The menu item is blogs and news. Newsletters are under there. Very cool. All right. Why do people pay nearly $60 a year to join Geeks on Tour? Well, first of all, they're people who like to learn. Yes. And they know that they can ask us questions, and one of us will answer if they're a member and you ask the question on our Q&A page. We have hundreds of tutorial videos, learning guides, and eBooks, and you get the written notes from these shows. You don't have to go back and watch the whole show again. And some people just pay us to say thank you for all the <laughs> stuff that we give for free. We love doing it for free. Great. But we still have to pay for gas. <laughs> yeah, somewhere along the line. All right. And next time, are we going to have a live show? Not next Sunday. We're probably gonna, not. We're going to be on the road. I think we're going to be on the road. We're headed to the RV rally for FMCA in Perry, Georgia, right. which is next week. I think we're going to leave on Sunday. So Right. But if you have an idea for a topic, uh, you can go ahead and put it on our website in the comments. Or contact us. Put it on our Facebook page where you can Geeks on Tour, search for Geeks on Tour, and see all of that stuff. That's it for this week. I'm Jim. I'm Chris. And we are Geeks on Tour. Keep pushing those buttons. What does this button do? I don't That's know. That's the way to learn. Just try it. Yeah? It's not going to blow up, I promise. Yeah. I promise. <laughs> Unless you push this button. Oh. I can push his buttons and he'll <laughs> yeah, blow up. Do. She does push my buttons. <laughs> I think I'll just let this slideshow run for a while. Oh, I like it. All right. You guys I... take care. We'll see you next time. Can I give any commentary? <laughs> commentary? Sure, go ahead. That's a real live Kiwi. They're in a museum where it's dark because they're night critters. 17 hours in one plane ride. That was Brisbane. Brisbane is the capital of Queensland, which is called the Sunshine State. Yeah, Just we had, like to had to take a picture of a license plate.
because Florida is the sunshine state. And we did feel right at home. It's right at the same latitude. Opposite hemisphere. Right, right. Yeah. Oh man, I love these koalas. They're so cute. That's from our hotel in Brisbane. And that's our friend in, who lives in Brisbane. And Bill asked a question earlier on. I missed it. Did the Note 9 exceed your expectations? And how about the Chromebook? Well, the, the Note 9 took beautiful pictures. Oh, Look at these. Uh, most of them, a lot of them anyway, are, were taken by Chris and the Note 9. My Chromebook worked well. I was able to get my videos and stuff. I used it mostly for getting the videos, but I still haven't found my favorite video editing program for the Chromebook, but I'm getting there. <laughs> the Sydney Opera House. God, I just get, I just got chills being in its presence. <laughs> right, it was way cool. They had some big crocs there. Now this is Auckland. And we got to get together with some friends there too. They let us stay at their house for a couple nights and they made us mussels. Oh, the oh, first man. Oh, green lip mussels were fantastic. Thanks, Grant and Allie. Well, I gotta end this. Thing. Okay. <laughs> too much fun. But you can check out our album. Just go to geeksontour.com and there'll be links there in our. Under blogs, under news, blogs, go to our news. blog. And in the blog, you have all the photo albums, a page right. for photo albums. Horses. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, you might need to read the blog to see what the horses are all about. That was cool. <laughs>